Oh, so much to preach on, so little time. But uh, we'll get through a little bit here. Most of you know I am a breakfast person. Uh, breakfast for me is the meal. And whenever we're out at camp, or sometimes when I'm visiting at friends' houses and staying there for a while or something, I'm, I'll usually you know, get up and I'll be the one. I'm not a morning person. Now, remember, this is after a few cups of coffee. But you know, there are two kinds of people in the world, those who wake up and say, good morning, God, and those who wake up and say, good God, morning. <laughs> but I find the morning is better when you have a really good breakfast, and it's uh, so the eggs and the bacon, the whole thing. Uh, yesterday I had breakfast with a friend of mine here at a local establishment, and we both ordered bacon and eggs. It just seemed like the thing to do, bacon and eggs. So we did, and as our food arrived, he looked at me, he said, you know, that's the difference between being involved and committed. So what do you, how do you figure? He says, well, look at your breakfast. I said, yeah, bacon and eggs. He said, yep, bacon and eggs. Think about it. The chicken is involved. The pig is committed. <laughs> He's right. Uh, and it raises a good question for each of us in light of Jesus' words in the gospel today. When it comes to being a disciple of Jesus Christ here in St. Patrick's or wherever you happen to be from, are you involved or are you committed? It's a good thought. Are you involved or are you committed? You know, one of the things I like about St. Patrick's is it's that, as least have I been here, is we don't tend to do things halfway. We do go all in. You might have noticed we sing every verse and we don't leave Mass early, even if the donuts are right outside. We do this for two reasons. One, we know that one should never leave, uh, never be in a hurry to leave the house of God. Second, we remember that Judas was the first one to leave Mass early. We do go. We go all in. We do this for a reason. But we're here to praise God, to share our stories, to share communion and fellowship with God and with one another, and then to be sent back into the world to proclaim the good news of the resurrection and the forgiveness of sins. But at a certain point, each one of us has to decide. Am I merely involved or am I committed to this whole Christian endeavor, to my parish? And how you answer that question will make all the difference. This is what Jesus is getting at when he says, where your treasure is, there also will be your heart. If our treasure, i.e. that which, or namely that which is most valuable to us, is our relationship with God and with others, then those relationships will take priority over everything else. That is, when we become committed, that's, that is when we become committed. That's when we organize our time and our resources to building up those relationships in our homes, in our parish, in our community. I've said it before, show me your calendar, show me your bank statement, I will tell you what your priorities are. But. Such a commitment is, isn't easy. And it doesn't come overnight. You kind of have to grow into it. Uh, there are moments of great inspiration, sure, but our Lord talks about stewardship. Who is that wise and prudent steward? That's an ongoing kind of thing. It's not a one and done. It's a way of entering into this thing we call discipleship, based, as we know, in gratitude. But such a stewardship of our time and our resource, it does, it takes time, it takes practice. It takes vigilance, watchfulness. You know, there are lots of things that compete for our attention, aren't they? I've talked about the four voices, voice of God, your own voice, the voice of the world, the voice of the devil, all competing for your attention. And remember, you know, very few of these other things are evil in the world. Let's talk about just the things in the world. You know, but if I was the evil one, I would fill your life with so many good things. Not bad things, good things. That you would not have time for the essential relationships that give life joy and meaning and depth and eternity. 
If we are not careful, our lives can become like our garages, filled with so much cool stuff we just can't part with that we can no longer use that garage for the reason that it was built. I see I've hit a nerve here. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually guilty of this. I'm trying to get stuff out. I've got two bays in the garage, and one of them has stuff in it, and it's not that easy to get rid of. I, I know of which I speak here. You know, and, and so that's, it's a good lesson for me. It's a good lesson for all of us is, is to pay attention. Be vigilant. Pay attention. Be aware of what's going on in our lives. What's happening? Don't let, don't let it get ahead. Don't get behind the power curve, as we pilots like to say. You know, we need to be like, as our Lord says, servants who await our master's return. We need to examine our priorities every day. Make sure we're focused on who and what really matters. As individuals and as a parish family, we have all been given so much. Thus... Much will be demanded of us. At the end of the age, we will all stand before the Lord individually, but did you know we will all stand before our Lord as a parish, as a community of faith? And when we do, he will ask us what we did to build up the kingdom here in 99504 or wherever we happen to be. So now is a good time to examine where our heart is. Now is a good time to look at our calendar and our bank statement. Is our relationship with Christ, with our parish, with our family, with the church, is that our first priority? Is it the axis around which everything else revolves? Is it, if not, where do we need to make adjustments? You know, because there is no guarantee of tomorrow. We do not know when the master will return. It could be at any moment. So now is the time to decide if we are involved or committed. 